Welcome, everyone, to a special short edition of Philosophy Bakes Bread, which we call a breadcrumb. Crumble, crumble. Crumble, crumble. <laughs> Philosophy Bakes Bread is a production of the Society of Philosophers in America. In our breadcrumb episodes, we include little snippets from past episodes or more substantive feedback that we have received on Twitter at PhilosophyBB, Facebook at Philosophy Bakes Bread, or by email at philosophybakesbread at gmail.com. Today we've got a fun breadcrumb episode for you about education for men and women. And basically, we wanted to take the advantage of the opportunity to speak once more, t- once more, and maybe it should be gender in education. I'm not sure what we'll call it. Let's let's maybe decide after we're done, right? Okay. But what we, we've had an opportunity to speak once more with Dr. Jane Roland Martin, author of School Was Our Life, and she was a guest in a recent episode we have, we, we just recorded based on that book. And we're looking forward to talking with Dr. Martin one more time with this big picture question we've got for you, but let's give you a little bit a refresher on who Dr. Martin is. Welcome back, Jane. Thanks for joining us again. Thank you. All right. Dr. Martin, as a reminder, is a professor emerita of philosophy at the University of Massachusetts, Boston, and she's also published many, many books on philosophy of education and gender and has even received the Guggenheim, a Guggenheim Re- Award. Yeah, that's right. I think we just have a we were just finished recording. We should our episode with you on um, uh, school is our lives. And we have uh, a, a nice little question for Eric was kind of chomping at the bits here to ask you this question. That's right. I mentioned in our longer episode, Jane, that, you know, a big inspiration for me in, in wanting to reach out to you was that I read an, an older essay of yours called Contradiction, The Contradiction and the Challenge of the Educated Woman. And you wrote a really beautiful essay, essentially critiquing traditional philosophers who talked about the philosophy of education, and you showed how gendered they were in thinking in very masculine ways about education. And you were you were showing how even one of the best, as far as that goes, who was John Stuart Mill, and, and an author of On the Subjection of Women, right? He was, in some ways, a really you know great feminist. You showed how even he fell short thinking that women should essentially get a male education as well. So that's that was his approach to equality. That's kind of at least my interpretation, and you can correct me if you wish. But, but basically, I want to ask you the big picture question of... Is there a difference between educating boys versus girls or men versus women? It, what's How do we think about gender in terms of what, what education should look like? <clears throat> that's probably lots of different – I'm being a philosopher again saying that's lots of different questions. <laughs> that's right. It is. It's kind of a big question there. But I think, I think we have to back – I want to backtrack okay. to the, the, the really – this, I want to go back, I guess, to the research I started. This was in 1981, I think it was, when I had a, a fellowship at the Bunting Institute of Radcliffe College, and I was to do fundamental research on, on women in, in philosophy, on women in education and in ph- in philosophy. My first discovery when I d- did this research was that women are just missing from the theories of the field. When people are talking about education, they just are forgetting about the education of girls. They're just talking about the education of boys. So I'm not, I don't mean women are missing as people in, in, uh, as teachers or as professors, but actually in the subject matter of educational thought. Uh, But then my much hmm. bigger discovery, and this I think is what people keep forgetting, is that when women are missing, women see women carry with us a whole lot of cultural baggage. So when women were missing, women are associated in the cultural mind with the world of what Virginia Woolf called the world of the private house or the private home. So you have we divide the world society into two worlds: the private world, the public world. The public world. This is not true. This is not the way it is. This is the way the culture th- pictures it. The, the public world is the world of men. The private world is, is the, the private home is the world of women. I mean, obviously, men live in the private home, but they're the ones who go out to the public world, and presumably the women don't. Now, of course, everything's changed where women are also going out into the public world. 
but an educational thought. What and not, not just thought, but an act, educational practice. What happened as part of earlier, earlier women's movement, the co-education movement, what the co-education was this big, huge achievement for women. It took years, maybe centuries to achieve, but what it actually was, was taking the education that had been originally designed for boys and men, and they took that and extended it to girls and women. That's what Uh, co-education is all about. Now, if you go back to an educational philosopher like Rousseau, feminists hate Rousseau. He has this horrible, horrible stuff about girls and women in his book, Emile. You know, and just very stereotypical stuff that ends with she, she's Sophie, the girl, is going to grow up to marry Emile, and she's going to t- take care of his home and his children, and she will obey even his unjust commands. Huh. So this real reason to hate Rousseau. However, he is the one who pointed out that in actual societies, although women and men, although women didn't necessarily go to school and get men's education, they did get an education. They got it at home at their mother's knee. And it involved, it wasn't just cooking and sewing. It involved what I call in my work, the three C's of care, concern, and connection with others. Interesting. Now, that was girls got that, boys got all the stuff of knowledge and science and history and politics and economics and all that. But and they didn't get the three C's at all. That was for the girls. Can you say that one more time? Care, concern, and, and connection to others. That's my three C's. Love it. Very, very basic. So the co-education movement comes along takes what Rousseau, in effect, said was the education for boys, says this is the good kind of education. This should be for everyone. What happens to the education for girls that included the three C's? It disappears. Wow. It's going to be, and actually you can see it in American society today. How yes. So? It, it has disappeared. So it actually, uh, so in my book, a book is called The School Home. I say, you know, everybody's going out to work today, women as well as men. And you're not to blame women for going out to work. In the first place, we have to work. But in the second place, we want to work. Men left home a long time ago. There's no reason why women shouldn't. But that means that the children, there's kind of a domestic vacuum at ho- in homes. This cuts across class, cuts across race, cuts across everything, where nobody's at home, nobody's worrying about teaching the kids the three C's of care, concern, and connection. So I was saying we have to get that into schools, into the curriculum, and we well, don't. We that, don't. That is fantastic. That is, you know, so Definitely what, something underappreciated in I, public schools. I, Go I ahead, Anthony. Yeah, no, I was going to say, I agree. That seems like something we need uh, uh, more of in our education. The, th- the three C's, the care, concern, and connection with others. And so, and so just to be clear, Jane, you're not saying that, you know, only girls need to make sure they learn that in the oh, curriculum. Yeah. Right. Right. Just to be clear, absolutely not. I'm saying, and this, this is why people get all upset I'm, that I'm sort of, again, sending girls back to the kitchen. No, no, everybody needs this. This is actually more basic than the three R's, more basic than reading, writing, and arithmetic, because you can't even learn reading, writing, and arithmetic if you haven't been brought up with, you know, the three C's of care, concern, and connection. And we see kids coming to to school today, and teachers have told me that this is true. You know, they well, they said I was writing about their own um, own classrooms. Kids come come without having the, that background from the home curriculum because everybody is out working all the time, and not to mention being on their cell phones. Yep. Right. <laughs> 
Right. right. So this, I think, has to do with with gender. This is the big picture, I think, of gender in education, is that what, culturally speaking, was thought of as women's education, some of it, not all. I'm not saying that people need to learn to cook. You can do takeout. I'm not saying sure. they learn to need sewing. You can do Velcros, whatever. You don't have to sew <laughs> anything anymore. Uh, I'm saying it's this more, much more basic curriculum that we're 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 losing sight of. As far as single, if you're talking about single sex education, I think really the picture there that I go for is that there are some virtues in single sex education and that we need to be thinking not what we, what we had in the past was when you had schools you had boy schools you had girl schools all the way through no co-education and what we probably need is some mixture sometimes sometimes all the girls are just together to talk things over and sometimes it's mixed interesting I think that's wonderful. This And this very much helps me understand what you were arguing in your earlier essay, and I'm looking forward to reading more of your work. Everybody, do be sure to check out Dr. Martin's new book, School Was Our Life. Ah, check it out, guys. All right. Well, thank you again for joining us, Jane. It's been uh, absolutely delightful and insightful and another wonderful conversation. Well, it's just been a joy talking to you. Thank you so much for having our, me. Our pleasure. It really is our <laughs> pleasure. And we hope everyone enjoyed it, this little breadcrumb as much as uh, Eric and I have. Yeah, remember, everyone, that you can call us and leave a short recorded message with a question or a comment that we may be able to play on the show at 859-257-1849. You can also reach us on Twitter, Facebook, or by email. And for any of that, again, visit philosophybakesbread.com. This has been Anthony Cascio, Eric Weber, and Dr. Jane Roland Martin with Philosophy Bakes Bread, food for thought about life and leadership.